Agent retention, the drive to increase market share, relevance in your market, competitive commission splits. The stakes have never been higher and the opportunities have never been greater as a broker owner in real estate. It's the daily decisions you make that can elevate your dreams into action. And that is why we're here. I'm Ed Barnes, Regional Vice President of Strategic Growth at Century 21 Real Estate and the host of the newest podcast for the brand called 21 Minutes. Here we will chat with some of the most dynamic leaders in real estate to understand the relentless drive the ways they push through the challenge and how they shift their business into high gear. Today, we're kicking this all off with the mindset, arguably the single most important attribute you can have in this game. And for this, I'm bringing in my good friend and colleague, Mike Meadler, the president and CEO of Century 21. Hey Mike, let's just dive right into this. I gotta take you back to a moment in time in a January afternoon, cold as can be. I'm watching my football and a phone call comes from you and you're telling me, hey, I have a new job. Happened to be president and CEO of Century 21. You remember that? It's an interesting day. I'd certainly, uh, you know, you and I talk about it often. It's like, you know, getting pushed outside your comfort zone to do something bigger. It was a, uh, a fun call to make because you've always been a very uh, near and dear colleague to me, somebody who kind of has that same mentality about just pushing on and working hard. So, uh, yeah, I do remember it. And, you know, it's, uh, it's been a fun journey to where we're at today as a team, right? It's really been inspiring watching you take this sort of mentality of 30 people now into a whole different level. You're talking about outside your comfort zone, 30 to 147,000. That's a little bit of a stretch, a little bit outside the comfort zone. But let's, before we get into the, the mentality and the wolf pack, let's talk a little bit about your professional story, Mike, and where it started and where it brings you today. I came into Century 21 uh, as a college graduate uh, with a, you know, a, a thought process that I could learn in a really great company. Um, and that's exactly what happened. I, uh, I've, I've probably held almost every position position inside of the organization. I've learned a lot. I've got an opportunity to meet so many people from every nook and cranny around the globe in 85 countries. And I, I got to tell you, it's been one of the most amazing journeys I think people could be on. Um, every day, we are delivering the dream of home ownership. We are standing up for our local communities and our economies. And you know, what folks don't recognize and realize is that real estate is anywhere from, you know, uh, 15 to 20% of our GDP in this country. And, you know, really is what pushes people to create personal and family wealth for themselves and uh, means so much to the local marketplace. And on top of that, is delivering home ownership and owning a home. It's, it's where people have their most intimate moments. So, you know, to be in this business, to be in this industry is really rewarding on so many different levels. And uh, I've just been lucky enough to be part of it with a great team and great Century 21 professionals for a really long time at this point. You know, you drove this thing called the Wolf Pack. Get a little bit deeper into that Wolf Pack story for me. Yeah, I mean, you know, the Wolf Pack kind of came out of our uh, our days in franchise development, right? Um, where we had a sales team across the country uh, of a couple dozen people, and you know what we recognized, I think, and realized as a team that really the more success each one of us had as individuals the more success we had as a team. And really the truth of the matter is, and this is how the saying goes, the strength of the wolf is in the pack, but the strength of the pack is in the wolf. Now we've blown it up, right? I mean, here we've gone from you know uh, a small stealth group of franchise development individuals and professionals, and now um, we've kind of expanded that mindset onto 146,000 professionals around 85 countries, um, delivering that dream of home ownership. And again, nobody is you know we're we're only as strong as every single person in the Century 21 system and how they represent us in their local communities every single day. When I became a member of the Wolf Pack, it made me also think, and today talking to you is like, let me go back and do a little research quantitatively about what is a Wolf Pack. And I, I got a definition that said, a, a group of friends that are bound together by loyalty, love, and respect of each other. And everything that you're telling me, Mike, using words such as stealth, hunger, warm-hearted, straightforward, most extraordinary, unmistakably wise, merciless, this is all 
sort of like adjectives that are in your world that you've pulled together, right? Yeah, I mean, I, I think with uh, with anything, being a little bit edgy, pushing yourself outside of your comfort zone, really, you know, you, you, you've said this to me in the past, nothing can substitute for energy and enthusiasm, right? No matter what. I mean, um, and the truth of the matter is, is, you know, whether you're in school with a teacher or whether you're a sales professional, uh, just getting into the real estate profession, um, you know, you have to have that energy and enthusiasm to push yourself forward and it will carry you such a long way in life. The best thing about Century 21 are the people of Century 21. So we talk about it, 146,000 professionals around the globe, um, but, but what's great about all of us is that we're all pushing each other to be better together than separately, right? And I think that's the strength of what a network can do for professionals, it can do for entrepreneurs, it can do for people trying to drive themselves towards success by pushing themselves out of their comfort zone. And so, you know, that I always say the best thing about the brand is the people in the brand. Um, and it, it harkens back to the wolf pack, right? It, it is one giant wolf pack that happens to be global. Mike, I couldn't agree with you more. Uh, and it's so true. But let's talk a little bit about the people in the wolf pack. Give me some examples of people like that that you could tell me that you've witnessed and experienced that with. I think what really stood out to me, honestly, over the last 18 months are individuals, folks coming together through that common bond in a place where we were really kind of pushed up against the wall, right? What really stood out to me were people like Todd Hetherington or Greg Harrelson or Kyle Sebeth rising to the occasion and sharing best practices and bringing knowledge to the table, not just about real estate, not just about the industry, not just about their local communities, but to how to, how to survive in business, how to be safe and practical with your sales professionals. And I think that's what great leaders do. You know, maybe it's Adam Obersky and Todd Hetherington who are on separate sides of the country, uh, you know, talking and coaching with one another about what issues they're seeing and how they're overcoming them in the local market. And again, I, I say that is the best part about the system is the value that we bring to one another as a, as a, as a Century 21 family. You know, I got to agree with you again, Mike. Um, I, it goes back to March 12th. I always say March 12th. And um, that's when it seems like the NBA shut down. And right then in March 12th, people are starting to know what happened. People froze. I'll never forget that. And to your point, I've, we were able to rally together, not only with our local national partners, but our international partners to have them give us a little foresight into what we're to be expecting over there. Do you remember that? I, I'll China give you, yeah, Ed, it's, I mean, it's a great point. I'll give you a quick story, right? I mean, we have some of the largest presence through the Asia pack from a, a, a real estate perspective. Um, one of our biggest uh, franchise organizations is in China. When we were on the phone in April and May, our leaders in China were saying to us around the world, people on the phone from you know Portugal and Spain and Mexico and Canada and you know South Africa, they were telling us, "Look, guys, here's what happened. Here, here's here's what we saw, and here's where our communities went. Here's where the real estate business went." And you know they were kind of giving us that confidence. You're going to get through this. We're all going to get through this. You know, just stick to the basics, keep everybody focused. And sure enough, what they said happened. And, and the real estate market came marching back. It's really all about the mindset in life and making sure that you're looking at things from that super positive perspective. Every day you wake up and believe it or not, the people who are out there, the people who didn't shut down, the people who are keeping that mindset were the ones who were ultimately successful based on what they were doing from a business perspective. So, you know, I always say this, you know, real estate professionals care more about their local communities than almost any other industry. It's just, it, it, they're showing up constantly. Is it good for business? Yes. But they are there to care for whether it's frontline workers. And we have so many stories of our great Century 21 brokers and owners who were bringing care packages and food to hospitals and fire stations and, uh, you know, police stations and ambulance centers. Uh, I mean, it's again, I just say that the first step was caring for the community. The second step was getting back to business, opening it up, being safe and practical about it. And then, you know, look where we are as an industry today based on what our professionals have been able to do for their local communities. You know, one of the things that I always ask and people ask, you know, what's it take to be part of the Wolf Pack? What's the type, what's the type of mentality? You've said a couple of things, but like if you were to give the advice to somebody that just meets you, you know, straight off the street, you know, how do I get into the Wolf Pack, Mike? To me, it's three simple things in life that you need to have in order to be successful. 
you got to think this way. You got to give 121%. 121% is 50% mindset. It's all about your mindset every single day. We talked about that already. You've got to be ultimately positive. You've got to have gratitude. You've got to be one of those people who are mentally strong in order to succeed at anything you do in life. Period. End of story. It, it, it's really more than half the battle. The other 50% is your skills and your knowledge, right? So no matter what you're doing, you gotta acquire skills, whether it's sports or like we said, being a professional. Um, but in real estate, there's nothing you can't teach yourself about this business. It's not rocket science. You can always figure out how to be more effective, more efficient. You can train yourself, you can get coaching. You can move yourself forward by constantly studying, whether it's reading books, taking you know courses online, whatever the case may be. The second 50% is making sure you're constantly gaining skills and knowledge and pushing those skills and knowledge forward. The last 21%, maybe the most important, is just going out and taking action. Taking action every single day and executing on your goals and working really hard. Like there's no substitute for hard work, right? And at the end of the day, the folks in this industry who go out and apply those three things, I can tell you, are out there crushing it and can every day be part of our wolf pack. It's funny you say that, Mike, because I come across so many agents and brokers that say there's no inventory out here, but somebody is getting inventory. Absolutely, it's in the focus. I mean, just you know, talking about uh, again about sharing best practices. Just last week, um, we had something that we broadcast over Facebook uh, Workplace, where we had Pat Provost from Northern California and Kayla Levon, another a tremendous professional from uh, the Tennessee marketplace, talking about why they're winning listings in the local market. Why are they winning listings in the local market? Because that's what they're focused on. So it goes back to their organizations having that focus and them as leaders driving that confidence, driving that mission, driving that vision in the local marketplace. People need to list their house. We just got to go out there and contact our sphere of influence and prospect in order to find them. You could be a market maker or you could be a market taker. But at the end of the day, we all know this. Kayla and Pat said it really loud. Listings control the market. Amen. Amen. And it's funny you said that. I was talking to a broker the other day, Mike, down in Pennsylvania and Melanie Banks. And she happened to say from Veterans Real Estate, C21 Veterans, she said, you know what? A couple of my top performers are going back to their uh, two years ago sales th that they've made into homes, which they would never have done before, and asking, would you be interested in putting your house on the market? And lo and behold, they are controlling the listings in that small, small marketplace, to your point. Sounds like a little attribute of the Wolfpack, thinking outside the box, going the extra mile. Would you agree? Yeah, I mean, that, that's exactly it. It, it. It's If you're out there having conversations, talking about the marketplace, you know, reaching out to your sphere of influence. As real estate professionals, that, that's all we have. We have our past clients and we have our sphere of influence. That sphere, those past clients, they'll use us again and it becomes a referral base and it becomes a place where you get repeat business. So yeah, you gotta be out there asking the questions because you know, life is happening. I, I remember, you know, we were shut down um, in certain states throughout the country. And I remember in the state of Pennsylvania, they were building a new hospital where they were bringing 40 nurses in those nurses needed a place to live. Even though the government said, hey, you know, we like, we're gonna shut down the real estate industry, these real estate professionals stepped up and figured out how to work and how to make things possible and how to get nurses into their community so that they could serve at this hospital. So things are always happen, even, you know, even when things don't seem like they're happening, things are happening, we just gotta be in front of it. Mike, tell me a little bit about the four pillars of real estate and the importance of those. And if you were to go out today and talk to every real estate company out there, you discuss these four pillars. Could you share those with us a little bit? Yeah, I mean, you know, for, for broker entrepreneurs, to me, the, the four common, what I call challenges, or really in my mind, opportunities are in this business is one, it's recruiting, right? Every single day, and I told you I got off the phone with Adam, Adam's sole focus, his sole mission is one, serving his agents, but two, recruiting agents to his organization. And if you think about it, he used this line, you know, if, if, I, if I recruit every day, I will always have a successful business. Um, and that's, that's really what we ask our, our sales professionals to do, right? To go out and prospect and recruit every single day for customers and for potential clients. Number two is retention. And, and retention is so ultimately important because 
if you are great at retention and you're great at bringing your sales professionals' dreams to life, then they feel better off with you than without you, then that is a great recruiting tool into your organization. And the very best leaders, they're able to do that. They do it through, like I said earlier, focus, confidence, and inspiration. The next is coaching and training. You've always got to be pushing your professionals forward. You've always got to be keeping them focused on why they're in this business, why they get up every day, why they fight the fight, why they work so hard, why they deliver that extraordinary experience. And it could be something different for everybody. As a leader, you've got to know what is motivating them and inspire them to get there through coaching and training them every single day. And the last but not least is, is profitability, right? I mean, we're, we're all in this because we've got to provide for our families. We have our own separate dreams as entrepreneurs, and we want to build a business that has enterprise value. And, you know, for me, enterprise value comes through running a profitable company, um, you know, keeping your expenses in line but understanding how to work on your top line as well. So, you know, those to me are the four common opportunities that real estate brokers have. If you focus on those four areas, you're going to be ultimately super successful at real estate brokerage. It's funny you mentioned that coaching and developing. Greg Harrison, shout out to him because he told me one day that he started a coaching and, and development company that rolled into a real estate company. And I said, you know, well, tell me a little bit more about that. And he said, well, first I bring in a brand new agent, then I make him a top performer, and then I make him a partner. I go, everybody's a partner? He goes, no, we do flips together. We do other things together. And that's how he keeps the longevity and retention of those top performers when they start going out there. Greg will tell you, my job is to, uh, you know, create all-stars, to create pro bowlers, right? It's all about that mindset is, look, you know, I, I have a culture inside my company of creating greatness and, and this is our mission and our vision. And look, if you're not in line with it, that's fine. This just isn't the company for you. I got a question for you, Mike. It's interesting. The market today, as you know, is so hot. Uh, as you mentioned earlier, we're having more home sales than ever. But the feeling is that are, the, are there things being masked with the way the market is taking place right now? And what's the future look like, you know, down the road from here? The truth is that, you know, with a hot real estate market, people sometimes have false expectations of how well they're doing. We're really, really hot. But the question is, are you really, really hot compared to the market? Are you keeping pace? Are you gaining market share? Or are you just up, you know, under kind of the, the line, right? Um, so, you know, even though the marketplace is hot, you really got to dig into the analytics, to the metrics to figure out where you're headed. And, and more importantly, tie that back to your goals as an entrepreneur and as a company. I, I think that um, the real estate world has changed for the better over the last, you know, 18 months. Um, we've got pushed outside of our comfort zone. Uh, you know, if you look at some of the technologies that have come to bear, if you look at, you know, what settlement services have uh, have done, like, you know, there, there was remote online notarization was not even possible in like half the states in the U.S. It became possible because we saw this need, right? I really think that real estate and the uh, real estate community has changed in the last 18 months and kind of fast forwarded really uh, to a degree that, you know, I don't think we've seen in, you know, the last 20 years that I've been in the business. Tell me a little bit about what would it take to be part of a Century 21? What do you look for? Because I know you personally interview every candidate that wants to come in to the Century 21 family and be part of our wolf pack. What, what would it take to to have yeah, no, and, and, and I, that's a good point because I think it's important, right? We want to bring in brokers who truly align with our mission and vision as a company and that are focused, as I said, like the rest of the wolf pack on that experience, on that consumer. Because every single real estate agent that holds a real estate uh, Century 21 business card and every single broker that flies our Century 21 flag up on their billboard sign represents Century 21, and that's what Century 21 means to the local consumer that they deal with. So we want to make sure that they align with that mission and vision about defying mediocrity in the marketplace. The better that you serve your client, the more and more repeat and referral business that you'll get. And we just know that that needs to be our vision and how we move not just the brand, but this industry forward so that we can serve consumers in a better way. I can't tell you, it's real exciting. Your passion, your drive, your leader of the Wolfpack. Tell me, what's next for C21? For me and for the Wolfpack, what's next is just continued growth. 
continued personal growth for our sales professionals, for our brokers, for our owners, for our organization, um, but more importantly, growth into marketplaces that we can serve better than the competition. Uh, but it's got to align with our mission and our vision. It's got to be with people, with uh, people who take this industry as seriously as we do. If they align with our vision of delivering extraordinary, then those are the folks we want to grow into the next market with. Thanks, Mike. You've been great being on the show today. Uh, next month, we're going to have Kyle Sabath. You know Kyle, right? Oh, yeah. He's a great story, and I know you guys were instrumental in bringing him in. I, I mean, I can't even tell you how that is a true testament to really accelerating your business when you're part of the Wolfpack. He's the number one agent in the U.S. by Real Trends, and he's got a lot of energy and talking about a great addition to the Wolfpack. We'll look forward to hearing from Kyle next month. Please, everyone, join us. And for all those in the Wolfpack or outside the Wolfpack, ow! All rights reserved. Century 21 and the Century 21 logo are trademarks of Century 21 Real Estate, LLC. The Century 21 system fully supports the principles of the Fair Housing Act and the Equal Opportunity Act. Each franchise is independently owned and operated. This is not intended and shall not be deemed to constitute an offer to sell a franchise. Franchise offerings made only by a franchise disclosure document. These franchises have been registered under the Franchise Investment Law of the State of California. Such registration does not constitute approval, recommendation, or endorsement by the Commissioner of Corporations, nor finding by the Commissioner that the information provided herein is true, complete, and not misleading. This advertisement is not an offering. An offering can only be made by a prospectus filed first with the Department of Law of the State of New York. Such filing does not constitute approval by the Department of Law. The Minnesota registration number for this franchise system is F-186.